Hey, what's going on everyone? Greg here, and today we have some juicy, juicy, juicy Apple news, courtesy of your favorite Apple reporter, or as I like to call him, a journalist. John Prosser has some really, really great information regarding the Apple AR glasses today, including the name of them, the price of them, and just a bunch of other information that I wanna dig through. Now for this video, I want to go through all of that information that Prosser gave us, combine it with a few other Apple AR glasses reports from other sources like 9to5Mac and Bloomberg, and kind of give you an overall overview of Apple's next big thing. So I have some information that, believe it or not, John Prosser didn't go over in his video, and some of my own personal analysis, or greg analysis, or whatever you want to call it. First off, let's go back to John Prosser's reporting and start off with the name of this product. Now, Prosser is saying that Apple's AR glasses, at least right now, is going to be referred to as Apple Glass. This naming honestly seems pretty spot on with Apple choosing to name recent products with the Apple branding. I can think of products like Apple Watch, Apple TV, Apple Pencil, and Apple AirPods as being recent examples, and they're really not using that eye branding that they've been known for with of course hit products like the iMac, iPod, iPhone, and iPad. So I think this Apple Glass name makes a lot of sense, and the only real travesty is we won't be seeing a product name iGlass. I just can't think of a more perfect pun for these names. Eyeglasses, you wear glasses on your eye, Eyeglass, I mean, it basically writes itself. It's also a nice little competitive shot at Google who introduced a similar product called Google Glass all the way back in 2012, and we all know how that turned out. Now, perhaps the biggest shock of Prosser's reporting is the pricing on these AR frames. Prosser is stating that the price of Apple Glass will be just $499 which at first glance just sounds way too low for this futuristic Apple AR glasses that we are all expecting. However, Prosser's reporting on this makes a lot of sense because his sources are also saying that for these Apple AR glasses to function, they are going to be heavily reliant on you owning an iPhone that can do all the processing rather than having the processing power be done on the glasses themselves. This is a super similar approach to what Apple did with the first generation Apple Watch with most of the processing actually being done on the iPhone rather than the watch itself with the first iteration of that software. Now on the first Apple Watch, that led to a pretty slow and frustrating experience with apps, especially third-party apps, taking a very long time to load. However, we know that Apple is hard at work fitting in a bunch of other technologies into the iPhone and Apple AR glasses that should make this a more seamless experience. Recent reporting from 9to5Mac says that Apple is already looking to get on the next 802.11ay standard. And they're looking to get this on the iPhone 12, which 9to5Mac says can stream up to 44 gigabits per second and a max of 176 gigabits per second with four streams. This Wi-Fi would be super crazy fast, as fast as a physical 2.1 HDMI connection to your TV. The biggest problem with this new Wi-Fi standard though is that it won't penetrate through physical walls, which would make it a horrible choice for a Wi-Fi home network solution. However, these Apple AR glasses would be sitting on top of your head and you'd have an iPhone in your pocket, which would actually make a perfect experience for this technology. This data transfer should be fast enough to offer low enough latency to make that a seamless experience for high resolution and high refresh rate displays. Also, the FCC recently voted in favor to allow devices to make use of this extra six gigahertz band. And that would significantly increase the spectrum of available Wi-Fi use like in the application we just went over. On top of all this, we already know that from previous information from John Prosser, who first gave us this information on an episode of my podcast, GadgetCast, that Apple is also looking to include 5G networking technology into these Apple glasses. 
And seriously, if you're not subscribed to GadgetCast already and you care at all about these Apple leaks and rumors, I gotta tell you, John Prosser is a frequent guest on the show. Sometimes he also just randomly drops leaks and information in the chat as we're recording a live stream show. So again, I will leave a link to the podcast GadgetCast down in the description below. We record it every Sunday at 5 p.m. Eastern and do a live stream. So I would love to see each and every one of you there. So with these Apple glasses being 5G capable, it would be another way to transmit that data quickly from device to device. Now let's go back to that topic of pricing for just a second. $499 really does almost sound like it's too good to be true. However, if you really start to think about this price point, it actually starts to make a lot of sense. Think about other Apple products that were aimed at a mass market. Products like the iPod, the iPhone, the iPad, and the Apple Watch. All of these products launched in a price window of around $400 to $600. And for a company like Apple, if Apple really wants these Apple glasses to hit mass adoption, they need to have it priced around this price range. And Apple probably wants to get as many Apple glasses on their consumers' faces as possible possible, especially for this first iteration, so they can get a lot of testing done. It really looks like Apple might be ahead of the game here, and they might not be waiting for other companies to release their own version of AR glasses. So if they're going to be first, they're going to need to see how consumers actually use this product. That was a very similar approach to the Apple Watch. They actually released it and they've done a lot of revisions with the software and focusing it to what consumers were actually using the device for. We should also note that Prosser said that there will be a prescription available for Apple glasses if you need them, and that would add on to the cost. On top of all that, we should also realize that glasses, much like the Apple Watch, are also a wearable, and wearable products are tied into style. So we could see Apple mark up the price of certain models with different materials or finishes, and possibly see something similar to an Apple Watch Band ecosystem for different styled glasses glasses frames. Speaking of that design, Prosser says he has seen a prototype of these Apple AR glasses, and he describes the prototype material as being made of plastic. He does note that the final material for this could change. He says that these are meant to look like glasses and not like the crazy tech concepts we have seen floating around. Prosser also says that there will be a LiDAR sensor, the same one we just saw launched in the 2020 iPad Pros and the one rumored to be on the 2020 iPhone 12 Pro on the right temple. He also says that Apple is already using the LiDAR data they are getting from the 2020 iPad Pro to help with their development of these Apple AR glasses. Prosser also says that the current prototypes do not have any other cameras on them. This was a big concern when products like Google Glass was out. During that time, a lot of people showed hostility towards the Google Glass users because they feared that they would record everything they were doing, and some places even banned people from wearing Google Glass inside of their businesses. I also have to give myself a bit of credit here as, again, a shameless plug to the podcast GadgetCast, I was talking to Travis about the first iteration of these Apple AR glasses, and Travis brought up the point of if these would have a camera and how would Apple address the privacy concern. And I correctly said that Apple may not even decide to ship a working camera with the first generation as they would be pretty aware of these privacy concerns. And also a camera on these Apple AR glasses would probably use a lot of battery life, which I'm sure Apple has to preserve because it is a very small form factor. And on top of that, Apple could always revisit adding a camera on a second or third revision. They've done this with other products as well. So it wouldn't be that out of line for these first generation Apple glasses to just ship with a LiDAR sensor and not actually have a working camera on them. Prosser also tells us that these Apple AR glasses will be coming with a wireless charging stand included, which sounds like Apple glasses will be portless, but that's not much of a surprise given that Apple's other wearables are also portless. 
Prosser also tells us that there will be separate displays in both lenses, no information about the quality of these displays or how the user interface will look. He tells us that the user interface for these AR glasses is called Starboard, however, which that name lines up with previous leaks from Mac rumors all the way back to September 1st of 2019. Prosser says our main interaction with these Apple AR glasses and the way we will control the user interface is with gestures, and we've actually seen Apple patents that kind of go over this. It will also scan QR codes, which we can actually see assets from, from a recent leak from 9to5Mac. Prosser also says that Apple is not planning to launch Apple AR glasses with support for sunglasses, as the current displays do not work on the tinted lenses. He notes that these could be coming via future iterations, but like most things, these also aren't released yet, so they could still potentially be in development and maybe make the release window. Now, the craziest part of this whole report is that John Prosser is saying that these Apple AR glasses were originally planned to be announced via the iPhone 12 announcement this fall. But due to current world events, they might be pushed back into a 2021 event because Apple really wants press to be there for this event. Which makes sense. Apple may want to give demos to the press with their own physical units that won't leave Apple Park. And if the product truly is revolutionary, the press will be able to report to their viewers and readers. And in fact, this makes a lot of sense given the reactionary nature of Apple products in general. Can you imagine if Apple announces a product like this without any hands-on time for outlets? All the quick initial reactions would be met with so much skepticism, and they would downplay a lot of aspects of this device without trusted tech journalists there able to vet customers' questions and concerns, it could end up being a huge PR blunder. So it seems we are definitely in a wait and see mode right now as everything is so up in the air and so unpredictable. But Prosser is saying that Apple really wants this to be a one more thing moment where they shock and awe us with a new product at the end of their usual keynote. And even if they announce it at the keynote, it likely won't ship until the end of 2021 or early 2022. Personally, I am super excited for Apple's AR glasses, and even though that John Prosser is telling us to temper down our expectations a little bit for this first generation, I can already picture some simple real-world use cases for this technology, like AR directions, quick important notifications, seeing calorie information displayed over food, pricing information over products, and even just interacting with normal, everyday physical objects and layering over important information. Apple Glass could change everything and be another paradigm shift in technology, one that we haven't seen since the release of the original iPhone. But anyway, that's what we know about Apple AR glasses. Please let me know what you think about them in the comments below. Also, if you like this video, make sure you leave me a like. If you want to see more from my channel, make sure you're subscribed. Also, don't forget to check out that podcast GadgetCast. I will leave a link in the description. And as always, thank you so much for watching, and I will see you all in the next video. Take care, everyone.